Hey, guys. Hey. All right, so thanks, Jacob. So like Chris said, my name is Stacia, and I'm a student here at 155, and I'm a junior at Union Grove High School, and I have been speaking in um, upstairs for like a year now. Like on Tuesday is my one-year anniversary since when I started doing this. So this is really exciting to be up here to give you guys like a full message tonight. So like Chris said, we've been in this series called Stupid, and tonight we're going to be talking about stupid gifts. And um, that's really exciting to me. It's a really good message coming up. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to start out by reading you guys like this big, long story. It's not that long. It's only like eight verses, but big, long story. And it's not going to be on your outline, but it's going to be on the screen so you guys can read along with me. And then after we finish reading the story, we're going to jump into some points that are actually on your outline. So let's get started with 1 Kings 17, 7, which says, Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. So when there's no rain, that means there's a, good job guys, there's a drought. So if you live in Georgia, you know that we have those sometimes and they're no fun. But in this story, we're in the desert. So not only is there a drought, there's a drought in the desert. So that's no fun. Moving on to verse eight. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Elijah, and said, go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed there a widow to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I might have a drink? And she was going to get it. He called and bring me please a piece of bread. So God sends Elijah to a different land from where he's currently at to get some food because there's a drought and he's hungry, and he's thirsty, and God tells him there's going to be some food if you go and find this widow. So he goes, and he asks her for just a little bit. He's not being greedy. He just wants a little bit of food and a little bit of water. In verse 12, it says, And surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Wow, that's a little harsh, right? So she is a widow. She's out here in the desert, and she's like, look, I don't even have any full bread. All I have is a little bit of flour and a little bit of water. So throughout the message tonight, when I talk about this little bit of flour and a little bit of water, I'm just going to refer to it as ramen noodles because we're middle school and high school students, and we know what these are like, and we know that they only require two ingredients, this packet and a little bit of water. So all she has is this little bit of flour and a little bit of water. She has a little bit of ramen noodles. That's all she has. That's it. She knows this is going to be her last meal, and then she's going to die because she doesn't have any more food. In verse 13, Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, said. The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry until the Lord sends rain on the land. So Elijah is telling this woman, look, I know all you have is one packet of ramen noodles, but I want you to take it home and make it, and then bring me some. And then you can have some. And then God, God will make sure that you get some more and that you don't run out of food during the drought. If I was that woman, I'd be like, "Uh uh-uh, look, all I have is this one packet of chicken ramen noodles, and that's mine, and you can't have any. I don't care what God says. But it says in verse 15, she went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken to Elijah. So this woman acts on some stupid faith, some crazy faith, and she's like, okay, I'm going to do what you say. So she makes this bread, and she takes it to Elijah. Not only does the bread last then, but it continues to last on and on and on throughout the rest of the drought, which is the promise that God made in the first place. So that takes us to point one on your outline, which says, even if it looks like there is not enough, God has already provided ahead of you. 
Even if it looks like there is not enough, God has already provided ahead of you. So in verse 9, it talks about how God asked him to go to this other land where he wasn't at, and there was going to be a woman there with some food. But what it doesn't tell you is before this verse happened, Elijah had been living in his home, and there was a drought there. So God tells him, I want you to go to this brook in another land where there's going to be a little bit of water, and a raven is going to bring you some food every day. And Elijah goes. He does what the Lord says. And then that promise that the Lord made him, the brook runs out. And Elijah's like, look, you told me there's going to be water and food here. Where would it happen? And this is when God tells him to go to the other land where the widow is at with the food. Now, do you think God would have sent him there had there not been enough food there with the woman in the first place? Because I don't think so. Because I know that we serve a God that will take care of us. And when we're children of God, he will always take care of us. He will always provide for for us. There's a verse. It's not on your outline, I don't think. But it's going to be on the screen. And it says, Luke 638, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you. This is not the right verse. I'm sorry. We are in 2 Corinthians 9, 8 different verse. I'm so sorry. And God will generously provide all you need. You will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. That verse is coming later, so if you wrote it down, don't scratch it out. (laughs) So God takes care of us when we're children of God. He will always take care of us. uh, Last week, I went to this cool night of worship, like um, service kind of deal at another church, and the pastor there was talking about how when we're children of God, we have a right to blessings. We have a right to the things that God will provide for us because he knows what we need and he will always provide those things that we need in his timing. So it might not always look like things are going to work out. It might not look look like there's going to be enough. It might not look like we're going to be good enough, but God will always make sure that we have what we need and that he will take care of us and he will provide for us even when we're not sure Which brings us to point number two on your outline, which says, giving in the face of fear counts for a lot. Giving in the face of fear counts for a lot. So we're talking about this woman, and when we first meet her, all she has is one packet of ramen noodles. That's it. And in verse 13, Elijah had to tell her, Do not be afraid. I want you to underline that for me. Elijah had to tell her, don't be afraid. Because I don't know about you, but if I was that woman, I would have been pretty afraid. This man I don't know has walked up to me and told me that he wants my last meal. That's it. He just wants my last meal. I would be pretty scared. I'd be like, what kind of God do you serve? Because that's crazy. I would be really scared. And instead of being scared, she acts on what Elijah tells her to do, and she goes away and she makes the bread. And God provided for her. Even though she was afraid, even though she wasn't sure it was going to work out, God provided for her. And he made sure that they had enough food, not only for that day, for that one meal, but for the rest of the drought. That's a long time, I would assume, because I know droughts don't just last two weeks. So God provided for her. And the cool thing about that is he doesn't just do that for this woman. He does that for us on a day-to-day basis. Because when we give to him, when we sacrifice to him, we can have confidence that those sacrifices will matter because we serve a good, good God. We serve a God that will always provide for us and that will always take care of us no matter what. Even when we're scared, even when we're alone, no matter what, he will provide for us. So when we're little... How many of you guys had a really big fear when you were little or, like, currently have a really big fear? Because, like, me, 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 um, So when I was little, I was afraid of lots of things and currently am still afraid of lots of things, like spiders. Mm, 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 no spiders. And snakes are another, mm, 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 no snakes because, ew. Um, and thunder. I don't like thunder, especially when the house is shaking and that's a no-go. In the dark because... The dark is scary sometimes. So when I was little, I always had that confidence 
that when those scary things came to get me, my parents would take care of me. So let's say it's dark and thundering at the same time. I'm like, let me just get in bed with my parents, like right in the middle of them, like put the covers over my head, I'll be safe. Or if there's a spider in my room, I'm gonna be like, ah, spider! Daddy, come save me, please come save me! I don't like spiders! And then he comes with a shoe and beats it off the wall and then we're all good. So <laughs> my parents always took care of me and continue to take care of me. And I have confidence that they'll do that no matter what. Why can we not have that same confidence with God? That he'll take care of us no matter what. He is our father, right? So we have a God as our father, and he is a good father. He is the king of all kings. So he will take care of us no matter what. When we're afraid, when we're alone, when we're uncertain, when we're not feeling good about ourselves, no matter what, we have a God that will take care of us. So maybe today you're sitting here thinking to yourself, like, my life isn't going too hot right now. I'm not really feeling too good. I'm kind of afraid about what might come my way and what life might have for me. You don't have to be afraid of those things because you have a God on your side that will take care of you no matter what and will walk with you through every storm. But maybe you don't have God in your life. Maybe you're not safe. Maybe you don't have him as the boss of your life, as we like to say in kids' church. But that's really easy to do. So on the back of your connection card that I'm not sure if Chris asked you to fill out or not, but there's a connection card in your bulletin. And on the back of it, there's next steps. And the first one on there is that I asked Jesus to come in and lead my life. I asked Jesus to save me. That's it. They're different in every service. But if you want to pray that prayer with us in just a second, then I hope that you do because I promise it's the best decision that you'll ever make and God will walk with you no matter what. So I'm going to ask everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes and make this really comfortable and I don't want you to raise your hand if you do this or shout out and come to the altar or anything. I just want you to pray it to yourself and to think about it for yourself. So you just bow your heads and close your eyes. I'm going to pray. Hey God, I just want to thank you for all these awesome teenagers that are here tonight and all the awesome adults and just everyone that's here. And I just want to thank you for all the things that you're doing in our lives and all the things that you continue to do and continue to bless us with. And I hope that every student in the room knows that you are on their side and that you will take care of them. And I pray that if there's anyone in the room tonight that doesn't have you as the leader of their life, that they'll have the confidence to take, take a step out in faith and ask you to lead their life. And that they'll be able to know that you are always on their side. And I just want to thank you in advance for anything that might happen with that tonight. And in your name we pray, amen. So if you pray that tonight, just mark it on the back of your connection card because all the volunteers here will pray for you about it. And it's really cool um, for us to know about. So let's go to number three on your outline. Number three, which says, when we give out of sacrifice... God makes up for it. When we give out of sacrifice, God makes up for it. So we have this woman. We first meet her. She's got one pack of ramen noodles, right? Just one, one pack of chicken ramen noodles. That's all. But when she obeys God, when she gives her last meal for God's will, he blesses her in return. Not only does she have food for the rest of the drought, but Elijah has food for the rest of the drought. And so does all of the woman's family. That's a lot of food. And what else, which is not in the story that I read, which I told you about, is that later in the chapter it tells us after the drought was over, the woman's son got sick. Like really sick, laid in bed, could not get out of bed. He was so sick. He was probably going to die. So Elijah goes to him and lays on top of him. It says that he laid on top of him and started praying for him. And God healed his son, her son. God healed her son instantly because the woman had made a sacrifice and worked for God's plan. God saved her son and poured out many, many, many blessings on her. So now let's go back to that verse that I tried to tell you to write down earlier and read to you, which is, Luke 6, 38, which says, Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, 
pressed down, shaken together to make room for more running over and poured into your lap. So that part of this verse has been our memory verse in big church for the past few weeks, just the beginning part, but I like the whole verse because it tells me that when I give something, not only does God give this same thing back to me, but he pours out many, many more blessings also. So who likes this flavor of ramen noodles? Anybody? Anybody like this? Stephen Holly, catch. So if I give those ramen noodles to Stephen, not only is God going to give me those ramen noodles back, but he's also going to give, <laughs> give me all these ramen noodles in return. So when I give one pack of ramen noodles to someone, when I give one blessing to someone, when I give one sacrifice, God just kind of like, here you go, like, woo! Blessings on you. Lots and lots of blessings for you. Because we can serve a God that is like that. And we can't understand that. God has grace for us that's uncomprehendable, like ridiculous. And I know you guys are still laughing over the fact that I just threw ramen noodles all over the floor. <laughs> but that's how God is. God likes to just kind of like toss blessings our way. If we serve him, he wants to bless us back. And that's really cool. Because that's just kind of how cool our God is. So... As someone that's grown up in this church, I know a lot about sacrifices because I sacrificed my time, I sacrificed my money, I sacrificed my family time because we're all here all the time, all four of us. And those are all things that I give up on a week to week basis, on a day to day basis to be a part of this church and to be a servant for God. But what I've learned is that sacrifices aren't as hard when you're expect expecting the blessings that come after the sacrifice. We serve a God that likes to bless us, like I just told you. And it's a lot easier to sacrifice knowing that. So we've been talking a lot about the past few weeks about this I Will initiative going on throughout the church. And we've in this cool youth group that likes to be a part of this. So we have this chair that we've all made these commitments to make sacrifices on and we said that I will and that I will be a part of this and for some of you you've made the commitment that Chris challenged us all to which was $20 that was his challenge to us and if 50 people bring $20 that's a thousand dollars that we could have towards our I will initiative for this church and to be a part of that is really cool I don't know if you guys know this or not but I serve in kids church on Sunday mornings also. Every, every week I serve in kids church since I was old enough to work in kids church, which was the second half of fifth grade. I was already volunteering in kids church. And throughout the last month or so, all of the kids, not just elementary school, but even the nursery, have had these banks that they got to take home and they got to fill with money and raise money for this I Will initiative. And next week, they're going to bring them and they're going to walk down the aisle during big church and dump them into a huge bucket, which I'm so excited about because that is just so cool to see all of our kids being so excited and so involved with this I Will initiative. And it's been so cool. A few other people in the room could tell you about this, about these kids coming to us and be like, Miss Tasha, Miss Tasha, Miss Tasha, I put all of my quarters in my bank this week. And you're like, good job. I wish I had a few quarters to put in the bank. But <laughs> these kids are so excited about something that they probably don't really understand. And we get to be excited about it too as teenagers. We get to make this commitment to make these sacrifices and to bring in this offering for this church. And what we don't realize sometimes is that this money that we're bringing, it's not just going towards our youth group right now or our kids church right now. It's going towards the rest of our lives in this church towards the rest of anyone's life in this church. It's going towards those kids when they get to youth group. It's going towards our lives when we're in college. It's going towards our life when we start a family, when we start having kids, when our kids have kids. All of those things are a part of this Iowa initiative that we get to be a part of now. We get to make these sacrifices right now, and God gets to bless us for the rest of our life because of it. And maybe... Tonight's your first night at 155 and you're like, 
been here one night. I haven't made any sacrifices. Sacrifices don't just have to be about church. They can be in your day-to-day -day life, whether it's sacrificing your seat at lunch to go and sit with someone else that you don't normally talk to, whether it's sacrificing your time to do chores for your parents, which I shouldn't have said on stage because now they're going to ask me to do that. And whatever you're sacrificing to bless someone else, God's going to not only bless you in that same amount, but he's going to bless you over and over again after that, multiple, multiple times after that. And so on the back of your connection card, there's one more next step. And it says, I will trust God to give even when I don't see how it will work out. I want to challenge you guys, all of you, to that. Because I think that's something that every single one of us can do more and do better. It's a sacrifice in order that God can bless us in return. And so next week, we're doing our big Give Sunday or however you want to call it, our Giving Sunday, when all of you guys can bring this, this money or these sacrifices that you've made and we're going to collect it. And I think we're probably going to announce the total at the end so it could be a big, exciting thing about look how much 155 raised for this church. And I want to know about your sacrifices. Tell your friends about it because it's cool. Like, hey, I gave up my cookie, so God's going to give me two cookies tomorrow. Like, maybe not exactly give you two cookies tomorrow, but something along those lines, right? God's going to bless you when you put out blessings on other people. So I'm going to pray really quick, and when I finish praying, the band's going to come out, and we're going to worship, and someone take those ramen noodles home because I sure don't need to. So I'm going to pray if you guys would bow your heads and close your eyes and just get serious with God for a second. Hey, Daddy. Thank you so much for letting me be here and be a part of this awesome, this awesome youth group. Thank you so much for teaching me that sacrifices equal blessings. And I pray that every student in the room tonight can learn that and can know that. And I pray that you just help us to have the confidence that we can sacrifice in order for your plan and know that in return, you're going to bless us back. I just want to thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives and everything that you will continue to do after that. And just help us to have a great week and a great rest of service tonight. And just thank you for all you do. And we love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen.